Tipton. Amen. Uh, Neil Herring is with me today, and I appreciate him being here, because the way we're going to do this is I'm going to give you a lot of basic hydrology and geology, geography, and a little bit of politics. And he's going to give you a lot of politics and fill in whatever holes he thinks I missed on that other stuff. And so this is going to work out well. Um, so I'm going to speak, and then Neil's going to speak, and um, I think we're going to have a little break and then come back for a Q&A. Um, the Upper Swanee Watershed, which is what WWALS has taken care, taken care of for us, has indeed been ignored in terms of water advocacy. Um, and it's also been somewhat ignored in terms of water science. Uh, that's, that's changing, and there's a lot of work going on here at Nespal and other places on that. Uh, but it's, it's one of the few areas uh, that hasn't been studied real well. And so it's important uh, that, that that's going on and that Nespal is here and that UGA here at Tipton is paying attention to that. I'm going to be talking from my experience uh, as a Satilla River Keeper on Blackwater systems, which are very similar to the WWALS systems. And I'm also going to talk about the Flint River. And I, I hope between both of these, it'll set the stage uh, for Neil to be able to talk about the political issues that we're dealing with in water supply and water quality. Um, I do a lot of talking, period, but I do a lot of talking at Rotary and Kiwanis clubs and church groups and stuff like that. And I like to tell everybody that we all have to come to the water hole. Imagine in your head a picture of a African savanna during a drought, and all these animals are gathered up at the water hole. They all have to be there. They don't have a choice. And as humans, we're the same way. Now we can move water to us. Um, we do. We do a lot of moving of water up and down and back and forth. But we all have to come to the water hole, not just for our personal existence and cleanliness, but for economic purposes. There is not a dollar made. There's not a commodity traded on the planet. Uh, there's not an electron that's produced uh, that doesn't depend on water uh, to make that happen. If you're retired and you're living off of a stock portfolio or savings, uh, that interest yield, that dividend yield doesn't happen without water involved in it somewhere. I can show you within two or three steps how water is directly involved in your personal revenue. And those are, that's just a fact. I originally came to the water hole through fishing and a, and a love of rivers and creeks and the ocean that way. But no matter how you come to the water hole, you're there whether you realize it or not. And the fight comes when things get scarce. So I'm gonna kind of give you a tour of the Georgia landscape and I'm gonna be, again be concentrating on the Flint and on the black water systems down south. Um, the Flint watershed, you can, you can almost see it on this uh, physiographic map. It's, uh, it's that little ridge that goes right across the central south, the west central portion of the state there. That's called the Pine Mountain Ridge. And just upstream of that is the headwaters of the Flint. And you can see the Chattahoochee coming across at an angle out of the metro area. So the headwaters of the Flint are right up there above that Pine Mountain Ridge, about 60 miles. It comes through that Pine Mountain Ridge. It literally comes through the middle of that little round or square shape thing, which is a cone of an old volcano called the Cove. Um, it, the river literally comes through the middle of that. It's gathering up water as it comes down, all the way down here to this corner, which is where Lake Seminole is. The Chattahoochee and the Flint come together, and it, so it's, it's it's traveling through the Piedmont of Georgia, which is the, the red clay hills, and then that little burp of the Appalachians that hooks over with those mountains in Alabama that we drove through yesterday. That's gorgeous, uh, and then it enters the coastal plain. The first part of the coastal plain is a bunch of big sand dunes, sandy ridges one of which is called the Tuscaloosa Formation. It goes all the way over along the base of those Appalachian Hills. 
And this is an old, the, the, the top part of an old stand of sea level uh, where there were giant sand dunes and some barrier islands. Uh, then, then the Flint does something that doesn't happen in most of the rest of Georgia. It enters an area of limestone karst where the limestone is actually at the surface. And this is called the Darty Plain. It's just west of where we are here. Uh, and it is um, literally the bed of an old lagoon uh, that's been flooded several times with a shoreline here that's called the Pelham Escarpment. Um, and it extends over a little bit into Alabama and down into Florida. And this is a very important geologic feature, as you'll see shortly. Um, east of the Pelham Escarpment is the Tiff Plateau, which some people call the Upper Coastal Plain. And that's where we are now which is rolling, sandy, and clay pebble hills. And then you get into the lower coastal plain, which is, um, if, I know you've probably been over there, that's just white sand. That's, that's an old, um, old sea level, I mean an old ocean bed too, but it was not, it's not this limestone formation. This limestone formation is over there, but it's angled down. So that's a, that's a basic geography and surface geology lesson. Another way of looking at Georgia is in watersheds. Here's the Flint watershed that I spoke of. And on the Tenth Plateau we have the Upper Oklahoma and the Upper Swanee, which goes a lot further north than most people realize. Um, and then you move over into the Satilla and the St. Mary's watersheds. The Okefenokee Swamp is part Swanee part St. Mary's. There's actually a ridge in the middle of the Okefenokee where it where it divides. So that's, you can look at it in terms of watersheds, and then you can look at it in terms of subsurface geology, which is a hard thing for me to get my head around, and I've spent years trying, so I'll try to help you get your head around it. Uh, there are many aquifers. There are quite a few. So I'm going to walk you through them real quick. Um, we can just not talk about that one up near Rome. I'm just going to leave leave that out of it for a minute. But this crystalline rock aquifer uh, is, is the Piedmont and mountain aquifer. And this is granite and limestone. It's pretty solid rock with clay over the top of it. The water gets down in the fissures and it comes out as springs, sometimes real close to where it soaks in, sometimes it's miles away from where it soaks in. But this is a, a very solid, uh, massive uh, granite and quartz formation that's underneath that. And then when you get off the edge of that, when you, when you come off the fall line onto the upper coastal plain, as I mentioned, there are these uh, fall line hills that are actually on big sand dunes. And those are recharge areas for sand aquifers that actually cut down, you can see they cut down underneath some of these limestone aquifers that are, that are further south. So that, that whole area along the edge of the fall line is a really important recharge area for some aquifers in this area that are called uh, the, the Cretaceous and uh, boy, it's gonna the Claiborne and the Claiborne. Those are those are important deep sand aquifers here. Then you come a little bit further south and you get into this limestone, and you can see that this limestone aquifer recharges here in southwest Georgia, just to the west of where we are, and then it, it's all the way over to the Georgia coast, into South Carolina, and down into Florida, and that's called the Floridan system. It's a huge limestone aquifer system. Same slide as before, but this shows the recharge areas. You can see the green is recharged for Cretaceous. Here's some recharge for the Clayton and the Claiborne. And then there's the recharge area for the Floridan, which is the Darty Plain. So this immense resource that's over this way to the east and down into Florida, this is the recharge area in the Darty Plain. And that's, that's really important to keep in mind for uh, the way the water flows and the economy, where our water comes from. You're pumping water here in, in Tiff County or in Berrien County from the Florida Dam, it's recharged over there toward Albany. 
that's and that's important. That's important to, to realize. So now 